Hello YouTube. Uh, today we're going to go through my process in choosing a vehicle for my van life overlanding adventures. So some essentials for me before even considering a vehicle is that uh, the seats would have to have a way to fold or move or be removed in order to lie down flat because sleeping on a flat surface is amazing. The second is enough space for me to lay down straight, not curled up, uh, not diagonally, to lay down straight in whatever configuration the vehicle's in. The third thing I need is enough space for two people to sleep in. Uh, if it were just me, it would open the doors to smaller model vehicles, such as the micro Prius camper build or other uh, smaller vehicle builds, but it's going to be myself and another individual on these camping adventures. Now some other factors uh, after those essentials is use. Uh, the, how, how am I traveling? What am I using it for? Is it for overnight sleeping or weekend warrior or weekend long trips or is it a permanent mobile apartment? And to answer those questions for yourself, there's a, uh, another YouTube video I made called Is Van Life For Me? Go check that out and then come back to this video. Uh, the second one is reliability. Uh, that's a second priority for me as far as other factors go. And breaking down and constantly repairing a vehicle is both an emotional and financial drain. And that takes a toll on the overall experience and enjoyment of travel. The third thing I needed, uh, well, the third thing I want is fuel efficiency. A major cost of van life, road trips, and overland adventures is the cost of fuel. So I'd like my vehicle to be relatively fuel efficient. Uh, the fourth thing is maintenance cost and, and complexity. When it comes, when it does break down or need routine maintenance, can I fix it with a single socket set or something I can pick up from Walmart? Or do I need a specialized tool that I need to, that I need to slay a dragon in order to obtain? Is it some one of a kind piece of equipment that you can only get from the manufacturer? The second part of that is are parts easily acquired or is everything a special order item? Now, if things are special order items and I get broken down in the middle of nowhere, it's gonna take a while for them to get that part. So this holds equally true for high-end vehicles just as much as it does for older models as it would be more difficult to get their parts. The next thing is amenities. Uh, how much space does it have for amenities or gear for everyday conveniences such as a 12-volt fridge or a portable shower? The next thing is expansion. Now some people jump in and go gung-ho, buy a sprinter van, top of the line, deck it out, and then realize that that style of travel is not for them. So I want to start off small, like a truck or an SUV or a, or a small van, and then if I like it, if I get a truck, I can always expand it with a hitch or a camper top, or I could, uh, from an SUV, I can always regress it back to its original st state, sell it, and upgrade to a cargo van. But if I already go with a fully decked out Sprinter or cargo van, I'm, I would have to undo all of my custom modifications in order to sell it, or only market it to a very select group of people. The last thing is build types. And that would be how I can maximize my space yet have as much comfort as I can given the lifestyle I want to live. These things include uh, keeping your some water on the roof like a solar shower instead of having it all inside. Uh, just a variety of things like that. So that's just build types. So we're going to do a series on that and let's jump into it. So I'm five foot eight which means I need about 70 inches of cargo depth in order to lie down straight and lie down flat. Now the thing is, most vehicles tell you the cargo space in cubic feet, which doesn't tell you anything because it depends on how wide the vehicle is, how high the roof is, and that will tell you the cargo depth. So it took a lot of time to find out which vehicles are long enough to accommodate a person lying straight down and not just one person, two people. And I've narrowed it down to just a handful of vehicles. Uh, the smallest ones are generally pickup trucks, if you want to put a camper top on it, 
with a six foot regular bed or an eight foot extended bed. Uh, SUVs would be included in there and the ones that I found for myself are the Honda Pilot and the Toyota Highlander. Uh, there were other vehicles but these are the ones with some of the highest reliability ratings. After that uh, I was looking at some other vehicles and the to Toyota Sienna came up as far as uh, lengthwise. This also includes the Kia Sedona, Honda Odyssey, Chrysler Pacifica, and Dodge Grand, Grand Caravan as far as minivans. And then the smaller cargo vans, the Mercedes Metris, B Ram Pro Master City, Chevrolet City Express, and the Nissan NV200. After that, you're talking about regular cargo vans like the regular ProMasters, the regular uh, Ford Transits, and your Sprinter vans. So uh, there's a lot of vehicles out there once you get to the van category, so we're just going to stick to the smaller ones for now, but I will go over some of the information for those anyway. When it comes down to vehicle reliability, the top 10 vehicles that people keep for 15 years or more, or at least the highest likelihood to do so, eight of them are Toyotas. Two of them are Hondas. So we're going to stick to things that are either in the highest reliability range or have the highest reliability rating from people who are in the business of cargo vans or, or using these vehicles on a day-to-day -day basis for their for their work. For pickup trucks, you have the to Toyota Tacoma and Toyota Tundra that rate excellent in reliability. There's also, of course, the workhorse of the Ford F-150 and a, and a ton of other uh, pickup trucks in the market. And for me personally, I chose not to go with a pickup simply because adding on the camper top and dealing with that was more complicated than just buying a SUV or a minivan for example so I decided to uh, skip over the pickup truck section. Now when you're talking fuel efficiency I have to keep in mind that the larger the vehicle the less fuel efficient it'll be so when you're talking about class A, B, and C camper vans you're looking at 10 12 miles a gallon when you're going up to the cargo vans you might be getting 12 to 17 miles a gallon the smaller vans like the nv200 or the city expresses now you're talking now we're getting into the the 20 mile a gallon uh, miles per gallon range same thing goes with the suvs and minivans minivans a little bit less maybe 17 to 25 miles a gallon so the only ones that fit my criteria for those we're going to go through now. Uh, the first one is the Toyota Highlander. That's a four-wheel drive, and I tend to go off-roading to get to the rock-hounding and adventure places that I want to. It gets 21 to 27 miles a gallon, has 8 inches of ground clearance. The roof height is roughly 34 and a half inches tall. It is about 72 and a half inches deep and it is roughly 44 inches wide, which gives you about 83.7 cubic feet. Now, if you pull out a, a tape measure, you can start measuring the exact space you have to work with and play around with that. Now, the Honda Pilot is also a four-wheel drive. It gets 20 to 27 miles a gallon, roughly the same as a Highlander. The ground clearance is a little less, 7.3 inches, and it is about 75 inches deep, 45 inches wide, and 42 inches tall. So it's taller than the Highlander, so you'll have an easier time sitting up straight and have more space underneath for cargo. Now, jumping over to the minivans, which is surprising that some of these minivans have larger cargo spaces than the smaller cargo vans. And the ones that I was looking at is the Honda Odyssey and the Toyota Sienna. Now they have, both have roughly the same uh, fuel efficiency at 19 miles a gallon city and 27 miles a gallon highway. 
uh, but the Sienna has a 6.6 .6 inch ground clearance. It is roughly 8 feet long in cargo space, 48 inches wide and 41 inches tall, which is 150 cubic feet of cargo space. It's a lot. And the Sienna also comes in four-wheel drive, or well, all-wheel drive. There is an option for it in some of the Toyota Siennas, which is excellent. Now, 6.6-inch ground clearance isn't a lot, but I have to remember my Honda Civic only has 5 point something, maybe 5.8 inches. Now, jumping over to the cargo vans, uh, the Mercedes Metris, the Ram Pro Master City, the Chevy Express, and the Nissan NV200, they're all roughly 21 to 24 miles a gallon. But the ground clearances range from 4.4 inches in the Mercedes Metris to about 5.1 or 6.1 inches on the Chevy Express and the Nissan NV, which means they are fairly low to the ground. So they have the same clearance as my Honda Civic. Now they have roughly 122 to 131 cubic feet of cargo space, which is smaller than the Toyota Sienna. Now these are the smaller cargo vans meant for city travel. These are are much much smaller than the normal size cargo vans that you would uh, deck out like the E350s. So this kind of concludes the smaller vehicles or at least smaller than a cargo van vehicles that you could use for your van life adventures. I'm probably personally going to either pick up a Toyota Highlander Either that or I'll pick up a Toyota Sienna for its storage space and the fact that it has all-wheel drive. So that's my personal pick for mine and I'll, I'm super excited whenever I get it to be able to show you my build.